Let me get all this stuff up. Can you eat it, Mr. I'm late for my speech? I wasn't late. I was on time. <laughs> Come on, you can do it. There you go. So this is the kind of agenda of what's going on today. I guess I should get out of that. A little bit about, I guess, who I am. Tom told me to put in the silly video thing that I'm going to just go right by. A um, little bit about types of threat in general. So this is kind of to walk over the threat landscape that you can think about when you're looking at things, whether it's an app you're securing, whether it's the environment, whether it's physical, any of that. Just corporate. How, what types of threat will you be evolved into? Why do testing? And then some of the fun stuff that you can do if you're actually going to do some of these tests. Uh, there's a lot of companies that are starting to have teams internal that do pen testing, that do AppSec, that do decent security work, and more of the aggressive and proactive type work. This is kind of the next phase of having red teams inside of your organization that have multidisciplinary attacks that understand all of these different facets, everything from physical all the way to electronic, well, inherent, social, those types of things. So that's kind of one of the things we want to be able to arm you with is a lot of the tools that you've seen or heard or used before can be used miniaturized, can be used very effectively, very, very quickly. Um, so instead of you know, waiting seven hours and playing with a web app all day, walk into the place, stuff a USB drive in, get all the passwords you need, even leave in two minutes. Then go touch it from the outside. Have as much fun as you want. But go to your client site and go to the bathroom. Watch how many computers you get exposed to. Um, that's the special I love me side. My ass was seen on TV. Uh, apparently, just because they did a show about us and, and doing some of these things. One of them broke into a car dealership, showed them how to take $200 million worth of cars in a night. Um, the part that they didn't get was they always thought the cars were their like, real assets, and it's not. Like $200 million is nothing in comparison to all the movie stars, all the diplomats, all the sheiks, all these other people that have bought cars and they have all of their bank account information sitting on site. Uh, Whoops. All the information on you, you have all the information on damn near every bank that's worth anything and a lot of bank accounts. Um, and then, you know, some other jewelry stores, we did the same thing. Again, we stole hundreds of million dollars worth of jewels, but it was nothing in comparison to the client records. And being able to trash their brand that was, that was the best thing you could do to kill their company. I mean, you can hack a web app all day and it'll suck and people will be angry and their site will get defaced or they'll pull out some information and say, oh, we lost user accounts. <laughs> when you actually, oh, that's, do you guys know what that is? It's an advertisement. Yeah, I wish. Um, that is the SP config from U3 drives. Have you played with that before? So we'll, we'll talk about that in a little bit, but that's one of the programs that you can use to program a U3 drive so that when you're on site, you can install a hacksaw and make backdoors and do all that stuff in about 40 seconds. Um, I'm not playing that. Threats. So these are general types of threats in environments. You can look at this from anything you look at. And, and a lot of things with red team testing is there's significant amounts of methodology to it. And it's really similar to anything else that you could test. It's really similar to testing a web app. It's similar to testing a network app. It's similar to testing lots of things, right? There's a strong methodology. You have to dig, get all your information. You have to be able to find what you're going to attack, effectively execute that attack, and materialize some sort of access and go back into information digging. With these, these are different types of threats that you're going to be looking at within the environment. Now, these threats, again, can come up kind of anywhere, right? Your general idea of physical threat, which I think that's Starbucks cards that vendors have given me to get into buildings. And we were talking about this last night. I wonder if that like, makes them liable for me breaking in. <laughs> and I'm like, so thanks for the Starbucks card click. Sensex is Sensex dead <laughs> because they gave me Starbucks cards. But Starbucks cards are kind of the best because they're just the right type of plastic. Um, so physically, right, you can get into lots of different things. You can get into apps physically. You can get into people. You can get into buildings. You can get into all these different types of things physically. A uh, good idea of that is somebody couldn't hack the web server from the outside, so they went in and stole it. Yeah. <laughs> awesome. Good job. Like, I'm impatient. 
right? If I can't hack it from the outside, I'm stealing it. I'm going to walk in and take it. Because then I can work on it at home. I can hang out. I, I can go get like a sandwich. I don't have to stress out. I can do it a hell of a lot faster. I can launch millions of boxes against the thing. I can just wait for it to update on its patches. I mean, that's great. Electronic attacks. Well, you guys have been talking about that type of stuff quite a bit between electronic and inherent threats. Uh, there's lots of different things you can do to manipulate electronics in environments, whether it's manipulating cameras, hacking RFID systems, being able to compromise applications or whatever else. Uh, a lot of times people use this now for more corporate espionage and intelligence. So one of those was we were running around at a company that uh, was a big, big, big gaming company in California, like super big that you know. And all of a sudden, they started getting slammed with about a gig a second worth of DDoS traffic. That's a lot of traffic. Like, a lot of people think about that traffic and think about in and out, but, but a gig a second is a hell of a lot of traffic. Actually, it was so big that when we found out that these people were getting attacked that way and we started tracing the sources, it was from one telco provider in Turkey. And the telco provider, oddly enough, after doing a little bit more forensics in it, had kind of led us out to see what kind of attack it was. Well, we did some interviews with the client and said, well, why would some telco provider over there be attacking you? And they're like, I, I don't know. Like, I don't, I don't have any idea of that. But we're losing millions of dollars because of it. Because they made all of their revenue from the online game. The game isn't up. They don't make any money. So one of the things we found is that the code that they use in the back end of the game, the graphics engine of the game, was actually owned by someone else. And they were licensing it. And in that license, there's a real specific line in the SLA that said, if it's not available online, we can buy the code back. Well, the game got successful, and they wanted their code back. So this is how they did it. They hired a whole bunch of people in Turkey. They tripled the amount of bandwidth of the telecom, not of a provider, not getting it. They tripled the telecom's bandwidth. They sat 25 people on site, and they hammered on this thing constantly, day and night. So. What, you know, what does that cost? Look at, look at how much an attack like that would cost somebody, right? It'll cost you 30 grand to lose a million. That's great. If I really want something back, I mean, you know, Tom and I were talking about clients not paying. There you go. You can tell your buddy about that. <laughs> <laughs> so malfunction and inherent threats. This is where a lot of AppSec lives, right? Is you, you build an app, it has a functionality, it is supposed to do something, but you haven't windowed it to do something effectively. You windowed it to just do it. Right? That's the famous part of an application developer is it works. That's why they don't want you security guys to come in, because you make it not work. Right? I mean, has anyone had that experience before? They tell somebody to lock down an app, and they're like, it's going to break it? Yeah. All right. Thank so. So you guys have been talking about all these great ways to fill and stop those holes. Um, one of the good examples of those holes actually getting to someone. So I, I, I like to use examples that aren't this ephemera, like TJ Maxx lost 90 million, blah, 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 blah. Who cares? Seriously, they got mine. I'm fine. 